Bam. Okay, we just got a really big surprise, something we were not expecting. Let's go take a look. So, first snow of the year. I was absolutely 100% not expecting this this morning. And this was definitely not on the weather forecast. This is not good. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have anything ready for winter. This is not a good sign. Oh well, I guess we'll just have to buckle down and get her done. Wow. <clears throat> And uh, not that it's like out of the question that we could get snow this time of year, um, but it wasn't in the forecast. It wasn't something anybody was talking about and I was not expecting to wake up and see snow on the ground this morning. We went and got hay for the horses today and then I went and cut up a bunch of firewood and we got it in the back of the truck because we don't have all our firewood done for the year yet. We don't have any of our firewood done yet. We ran down uh, in the to the woods and cut some firewood up and got it in the truck. And so that's what the kids are doing right now. They're throwing the firewood out of the truck so that I can get it split and we can get some stacked up. So there's probably a few weeks of firewood there. Maybe we'll do a quick video in the near future on hardwood, softwood, different types of wood, what their BTUs are. Different types of wood have different types of characteristics and so they burn differently. And knowing how those woods burn or how they perform when they're being um, burned, uh, can make a difference on how your fire performs and what you want it to do, whether you want light or heat or a long fire or a short fire or whatever. Here on the homestead, we use fire a lot because we do all of, almost all of our cooking with wood. My goal is to be posting a video every single day. Maybe, that's, that's what I'd like to have happen, but I don't, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but that's what we're gonna shoot for. So it's almost the end of the day, I'm almost out of daylight, and I thought, oh my goodness, I haven't filmed anything except the snow this morning. I'm cooking supper right now, I'm getting supper ready, and I thought, you know what? Why don't I make a quick video, I'll film a quick little bit, about uh, our wood cook stove. I'm not gonna go into super depth about it, but uh, I would like to talk a little bit about it real quick. So let's run down the wood cook stove. We have this propane stove here, uh, cheap. We picked it up yeah. the side of the road or off of Craigslist or something several years ago. So we use that in the summertime when it's way too hot to use the, the wood stove. But pretty much this thing is going eight or nine months out of the year we're using this wood stove. So let's go through it really quick. <laughs> so we, we have you. Let's see you. Is that you? What's your name? Tristan. Tristan. Say tri. No, 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 no. Don't, not like a fish. Ta, like a T, like, like a tree, like Thomas. Say Tristan. Tristan. <laughs> okay, so we have the firebox. Now this stove is called the Flame View because it has a glass door in the front, which is really nice. It's really good to have a glass door. If your stove does not have a glass door, I highly recommend cutting a glass, cutting a hole in it, getting some tempered glass and some gaskets and putting a glass, even if it's just a little tiny window, because it's so handy to be able to see exactly how your fire is burning. Let's see the fire makes such a huge difference. Um, so anyway, this is the fire box here and we can put uh, we can we can fill this thing up in the winter time, damper the stove down. Man, come on, camera, stay focused here. Let's see. I think we're gonna put it on manual. Let it focus, and then we're gonna switch you to manual. Okay. Hopefully, it'll stay in focus now. Okay. So this this stove, we can fill this thing up. You can put a 20 inch log in here. You can fill this whole box up. Uh, if you fill it all up with oak, you can damper it down around eight o'clock at night and you will still have a fire going when you get up in the morning, eight or so in the morning, 12 hours later, it, there'll be a still a bed of coals in there. So the cooktop is huge and we can put 
all kinds of pots and pans on the top of this thing. And the heat is so much more even. You put your pan on the hot side of the stove and the whole bottom of the pan heats up. It's not like you got a flame in one little spot. So the middle of your pan is burning your eggs and the outside of the pan is not doing anything. You put it on here, fantastic. The whole entire pan heats up, it's super even. So you don't have like a control knob to turn the heat up or down. It's all based on where the position, where you position your pan on the stove. So you've got hot right over the fire. You've got medium right here in the middle. You got cool and simmer on the other side. And trivets are super important. So here's a trivet, this is a very short trivet. We have a medium trivet underneath this pan pot here. In the oven we have a taller trivet uh, that's actually got a venison roast, uh, a deer that a friend of ours got just the other day. Um, and we've got some roast from that. And uh, so we've got that cooking in there and then we've got squash cooking on the rack. So you guys, how are you guys doing with the firewood? All done. All done? Cool, all right, we'll get split in that in a minute and uh, you guys can run it in and start stacking. So take a break for a second yeah! and we'll get going. Okay, so back to the stove. The oven. This stove for a wood cook stove actually has a fairly large oven, um, which is great. I, I would highly recommend, if you're gonna get a wood cook stove, get a warming shelf. And we actually have a warming oven. So it's like a whole little clothes thing. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. So you're over here cooking breakfast in the morning, you're whipping up a bunch of pancakes and where do you put them? You don't want them to cool off before everybody's ready to eat or you have all of the meal done. So you stick them up in here, Put a metal plate in there, you know, or whatever. We even put, you know, whatever. Just be careful because it does. This is the wood. This is the stove pipe here coming up through. So it does get pretty hot. Um, but yeah, you can put stuff right in there. You can thaw things out. You get something from the freezer and you want to thaw it out in an hour or two instead of leaving it sit on the counter all day to thaw out or put it in the fridge for a whole day or something. You need it to thaw out quick. Just set it on a plate, put it in there. Fantastic. You want to keep your coffee hot? Look at this. This is my. This I made this this morning. It's a little old, yeah, but. I put that up there if I need a little extra, you know, it's nice and hot, ready to go, no problem. Definitely get a, at least have a warming shelf on your wood cook stove, highly, highly recommend that. Um, you have controls to change the way the heat flows. The heat runs from the firebox and it and you can you have a lever to control where the draft goes. So when you light your fire, it's going straight from the firebox right up the, the chimney, right up the flue. But when you're ready to start using the oven or you wanna keep, get that whole entire stove warmed up and pumping heat into the house, you flip this little lever here and that changes the direction of the flow. So it blocks the opening directly, going directly up the flue and it forces the air to move all around the stove. So it goes across the top of the stove, down the side of the stove, around the oven, underneath the oven, and then through an opening that drafts up through the flue from underneath the oven. So the heat is going from the firebox all through the entire stove, heating the whole thing up. That warms, that's what controls the temperature in the oven. Is that your dinosaur roaring over there? Okay, no, no more dinosaur noises while I'm filming, okay? Dinosaur, no more dinosaurs while I'm while I'm filming, okay? Because people can't hear if I'm filming and your dinosaur is roaring, your dinosaur is too noisy. Short, quick video on the wood cook stove. I'll go into more depth on it another time, but that's basically it in a nutshell. We love this thing. This is the this is all we use to heat the house. The entire house, all year round, all winter long, 30 below zero, middle of winter. This is all we're using to heat the house, and it's fantastic. We love it. We cook on it. It's ready to go first thing in the morning because you've already got a fire going in it, especially in the dead of winter, and it's just, it's amazing. We love this thing. It's definitely a must have for anybody off grid homesteading in a cold climate. This stove we bought when we first moved onto the property and poured the foundation and capped it off and we're living in it. Um, so we've had it roughly seven years, eight years. Uh, it's brand new, it was made, manufactured and shipped to us. So there are companies still making wood cook stoves. There's, there's quite a few out there. Do some research. There's some good pluses, minuses, differences and all the different kinds, um, different prices, um, everything from super expensive cast iron, fantastic, beautiful stoves to something that's this, that's steel, uh, a little less expensive, but fantastic. We just like the size of this the functioning of it. It's made by an Amish family. They're, they're manufactured by an Amish family in Canada. Um, and so, you know, the Amish use these wood cook stoves every single day. So I would hope they kind of have a grasp on what it should be like, um, you know, how a wood 
cook stove should perform. So, uh, so yeah, we love this. This is the, called the Meridian Flame View. Um, there's a lot of other stoves out there, but do some research, check it out. I'll do a more in-depth video on the wood stove another time, because we have to get all of that firewood split and in the house before tonight. And I'm actually leaving to go up to a camp up in uh, Northern Maine, sort of Northern Maine, roughly the middle of Maine um, for the weekend. And I need to get some things finished up around here before I take off. Really quick, wanted to share um, a little trick to splitting firewood. So, this is something I learned from a friend of mine, Eustace Conway, down in North Carolina. We hang out once in a while, and uh, he uh, he taught me this. So, that was a very easy log to split. That's terrible. That's not a good example. All right, we need a tougher one. That's got some knots in it there at the end. We'll see. All right, so you got a piece of wood. Right. You slammed your axe into it. Now a lot of people will take and start chopping like this, trying to drive the axe down through the log. But what weighs more, the head of this axe or the log? Usually it's the log, unless you get a very small piece of wood. So the amount of force generated by swinging something down is going to be greater for the log than the head of the axe. So we flip it around. Put the log kind of on your shoulder like this, that helps balance it, get you set up for your swing. And bring the axe head and the log straight down on the chopping block together like this. There we go. All right, we'll do another one. That was too simple. I need a tricky one. This one might be tricky, I don't know. So there we go, we got our ax in the log. We're gonna take it, whoop. There we go. <clears throat> Ooh, three that time. There you go. So that's a little trick to split in tougher wood. Okay, I have wanted to get this YouTube channel up and running for so long and I, I've been working on it for off and on and playing with it, messing around with it for, for years actually. I've wanted to share our experiences here on our homestead, our off-grid homestead here in Maine for a long time. And I've wanted to teach and share primitive skills, wilderness living, survival, homesteading, for, for a really long time here on this channel. So I got into photography, I got a camera, I started figuring out how to use it, making videos, started learning how to edit, got editing software, went through the whole thing. And I spent so much time trying to make perfect videos. The, the learning curve was huge for, for making and producing a video. I, I went from knowing nothing whatsoever at all, not even a clue how to use a camera, to editing and filming and editing and everything else. And it's been a lot of learning, but now I'm realizing that I just need to get the videos out there. I just need to make them and get them online. It doesn't matter if they're perfect. It doesn't matter if they're fantastic. I don't have to be Peter McKinnon out there in Canada making seriously stellar videos. I don't know how he does it. That's insane. But there's a whole bunch of them. They make all kinds of fantastic videos all day, every day, every every day of the week. I don't understand how they do it. I just I can't do it. I I don't know. So. I realized that if I'm gonna make this happen, I'm gonna make this channel work, I just need to start getting content on the channel. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. I didn't spend a lot of time editing this. I just kind of threw the clips together that I filmed and, and put it together. I didn't spend a lot of time playing with the music or the sound. I didn't play a lot, spend a lot of time color correcting it. Um, in fact, I spent no time at all color correcting it. So just chopped it up, threw it together, put a little bit of music in there. Um, and that's it, and then I'm gonna upload it. I realized like all this technical stuff that I was learning along the way that I was trying to perfect, I don't think it matters. I just need to get stuff on the channel and make it work. So from now on, I'm trying to post, I'm gonna to try to post every single day. I don't think it's gonna happen. Our life is crazy. Sometimes we don't have enough electricity for me to even turn on the computer. Between kids and animals and life here in the homestead, I don't know if a video a day is even possible for us. But that is my goal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot for that and if we, if we, every other day, every three days, whatever, as long as I start putting videos up there, 
That's my goal. So if you like this video, if you have any interest whatsoever in it, like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if, if, you, uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, things you wanna see, primitive skills, wilderness living, homesteading, questions about the wood stove, wood, our house, whatever, post them in the comments below. I'd love to have ideas. All right, I need to get this on the end of this film. Here we go. So, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Who knows?